G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, Sleeping Warrior. What can I say? I've been asking Sleeping Warrior for a long time to explain how his RDD manages to determine the direction of the acceleration. This becomes rather interesting to calculate when you deny there is an acceleration due to gravity. Well, Anthony, he dropped this masterpiece just a day ago. So, just for fun, let's see how long before Sleeping Warrior says a dumb thing. We've understood what density is. Oh, Anthony, why are you using a voice changer? Well, okay, that is dumb, but that's not the dumb thing I'm waiting to hear. I really want to hit this dinger hard. In the same given amount of space, if there are more things, we say that it's denser. No, 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 no. It, well, that didn't take long, did it? Well, we can tell that Anthony's writing the script here, can't we? So, let me get this right, Anthony. If I had a 10 centimetre cube of, say, lead, that's 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres. Now, if I cut it in half, I have two pieces in the same volume. Does that mean it's now more dense? Uh, what if I put 1,000 1 centimetre cubes of balsa wood in that same box? That would be much more dense now, wouldn't it? Because there's many more things in there. Dumbass. Okay, on with the derp. Density is simply the measure of how compact the mass in a substance or object is. It's mass per unit volume. Well, finally a correct statement. No need to ding you, Anthony. I think you must have read that from Wiki. What does the relative density tell us, though? What can we understand from this? First, it tells us that silver is a lot more dense than water under the given conditions. Approximately 10.5 times denser. But that's pretty obvious given the numbers. You know, if you had narrated this all by yourself in a quiet, calming voice, you would have had a winner ASMR video and we'd all be nice and sleepy by now. Though, your voice is usually has the uh, involuntary relaxation effect on certain sphincter muscles that, well, we don't really want that though, do we? Do a video and tell me how I'm wrong. On with the derp. And it will float if it's less dense than the liquid it's placed in. Mate, I'm going to show you some less dense things in water and they're not floating at all. But you'll have to wait to the end to see them. On with the derp. So you're in Australia, okay, go on, on with the derp. I thought all that you had to do to fly was throw yourself at the ground and miss. So to fly, you just turn upside down and let go. Then you will go up to you hit that dirty great big rock. Oh, okay, that's not going to work. Dumbass. On with the derp. Okay, what was that? Was it Bob Nodal popping his head in? I guess the rotation of that girl needed to be... A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. On with the derp. Oh, mate, I will want to talk about it. Not my kryptonite. I think I like this. Okay, Anthony, I have a real life example for your fanciful ideas to come unstuck on. Now, have a watch as Sochi makes a water ball. Notice how, despite being in the medium of air, we know it's air because Sochi's breathing it, the water ball only ever moves in the direction it is accelerated by the Teflon bat. On with the derp. So its relative density will be 0.934. As its relative density is lesser than 1, it will float in water. As its relative density is lesser than 1, it will float in water. As its relative density is lesser than 1, it will float in water. Anthony, learn to edit and, and check your work. You have some repeating loops. You have some repeating loops. Repeating loop, 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 loop. Dumbass. Oh, Anthony, red on red, what were you thinking? Hiya. No, you haven't explained why the objects move toward the ground. Okay, CO2 is a gas, right? And its specific gravity, well, it's quite a bit less than water. I think we all can agree on that. So those bubbles, in your glass of coke, they always rise to the top, don't they? Okay, let's go back to Sochi, shall we? 
Now let's watch as he adds a fizzy tablet to the water ball. Now those CO2 bubbles are mixing evenly throughout the water ball and making it opaque. They don't just know which way is up or down, do they? Well, despite being in the medium of water. So, despite being in the medium of water, and despite there being a human Sochi right there providing a up-down reference frame, the CO2 bubbles don't move in any direction. Uh, correction, Wally. Rather, they move in all directions randomly. Do a video and tell me how I'm wrong. On with the derp. 8.23. Freaking hell, Tony. Now you've left words off the bottom of the screen. Learn how to edit. Dumbass. Okay, so that is why there's a huge wind roaring up the side of every mountain, folks. Timing, dude. I mean, look, I'm not a slow reader, but I'm having to hit the back button over and over again. Learn how to edit, Anthony. And then, when you put the text right on the bottom, the YouTube timeline pops up and you can't read it anyway. Hiya. Oh no. Is Tony going to claim that he bested Newton and Einstein? He is, isn't he? Oh yep, he did. On with the derp. You know, Anthony, all this nonsense just because you have to ignore gravity. Because gravity destroys all your F.E. fantasies, doesn't it? Well, I guess we all know Anthony will not accept the demonstration by shows he the Jackson ought. No, he won't. Because once the ISS is in play, it's all over Red Rover, Flat Earth is well dead. So Anthony, have a look at this old video of mine. I made this just for you a while back. But this time I'll only ask you just one question. Now look at this side view as the car accelerates. Why does the helium balloon move forward while the air-filled balloon moves backwards? Oh, and note, those observers sat there providing you with the magical human reference frame, so you don't have any of that silliness to worry about. Well, I will leave this with you, Anthony. See if your RDD can explain the movement of the helium balloon in the car as it accelerates. But I thought I'd leave you with the easy one, because I know you certainly can't even attempt to explain Sochi's floating CO2-filled space ball, can you? That space ball, it kills RDD well dead. Well guys, if you like what I've done here, how about you click like and subscribe? But even better, how about you pop over to Mr. Sensible's place? He has just done a very similar thing and ripped Anthony left and right, so... I'm going to pop over there and check out what he's done. I didn't want his destruction to flavour mine, so I haven't seen it yet either. But that's what I'm doing right now. Hey Wally, thank you very much for letting me join you in this kicking of Sleeping Warrior and his stupid relative density disequilibrium rubbish. I thought I'd add something else to the wonderful things you've already said, and that is bending of light. According to Newtonian mechanics, starlight should be bent by massive objects. Just like as an object passes the Earth, its orbit, its path, is deflected slightly. In 1915, as part of his theory of general relativity, Einstein got the calculations completely correct and was able to show that starlight should be deflected during a total solar eclipse of the Sun. It wasn't until 1919, May the 29th, I think, that it was observed from several locations the positions of stars near the sun were in slightly the wrong place because the light from those stars had been bent around the sun. You can see the true light pass, the bent light pass in white, traveling from the distant galaxies to us, and they get bent as they pass a supermassive intervening object which means that they actually appear along those orange lines. That gives you duplicates and smears. Here's the famous Einstein cross. You can see four images of the same quasar. The light paths have been bent around the galaxy that is between the quasar and us. There are lots and lots of other examples of the light from far objects being bent round supermassive objects. So Mr Sleeping Warrior, we would like an explanation. How is the density of light 
going to affect its path through the vacuum of space. I think that your theory needs a little more work. Anyway, thanks for letting me pop in, Wally. You take care. All the best, everyone, and hope to see you on my channel sometime soon. Stay sensible. Brrr.